four is the best season. Uh, because, yeah, most people go season three. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, and I agree season three is really cool. But I, I really, I, I, I don't see it. I really don't see it as being the best, as, as being the best season. I think the character development in season four, and especially, I think the emotionality in season four is really well played. I think that's, yeah. that's the time when they perfect, perfected, you know, how to, how for these, a guy like Angel to express emotion, which was a really hard thing for them to do ever since he was in Buffy. In Buffy season one, the dude was incapable of expressing any yeah. and, meaningful emotion. And Angel was, uh, for people who have never seen the show, he's a vampire who has been cursed with a soul because in the, in, in Buffy, vampires just don't have souls, so it's okay yeah. to kill them because uh, they're just evil. Yeah. But Angel is a vampire with a soul. He's the only one. Um, and so he's, but he's, he's kind of, I, ca- I like to call them the Edwardian characters after Edward from Twilight. He's a, although he, Edward is not the first to do this, he's probably the most uh, famous. They're the very pretty, pretty boys that are just put in the show for the, the female character, whether it's the main, she's the main character or whether she's just a side character, to pine over. He doesn't have much of a personality. He's just there to look good and protect her. And that's all that Angel was in the first season. Yeah, he uh, got better as the Oh, he definitely did get better. And especially in his own TV show, he was able, they were able to flesh him out a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and the character benefited from that. But uh, at the beginning, he was really boring. Yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to my mind that Angel had I mean, really, some of the best television actors around. Yes, by and, far. Yeah, and, and certainly the most undercredited. Yeah. Uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, I mean, both me and Adam are really uh, fond of the acting talents of Alexis Denisoff. Yes. Who plays uh, Wesley Wyndham Price for those Angel fans in the audience. Yeah. And he's just superb. It's unbelievable to watch that guy. Uh, there was a... I think Rory told me that in the fourth season, for part of the season, uh, something had happened to his face where he That's could right. only move the like right ba- side of Like one his side face. of his face really had movement. Yeah, as yeah I uh, the, the other side was completely condition. frozen. And I could, I didn't know until Rory told me that's how, yeah. that's how good this actor is. Cause, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and the directing on that. Yeah. Huge props to uh, anybody who had anything to do with directing at any time. Tim Minnie or Bed and uh, Joss Whedon, whoever was directing those episodes. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and and uh, one good thing I like about um, Angel and Buffy and a lot of Joss Whedon stuff because far because uh, uh, Joss Whedon's uh, other two uh, TV projects, um, Firefly and later on Dollhouse, which is another fantastic mm-hmm. series. By the way, you should uh, check out all of these series; they're, they're, they're all really, really good. good. Yeah, uh, they all had uh, comic runs after because every single one of them ended with a cliffhanger and never got a like a satisfactory closing. Yeah. So they all have comic books based off them now. I'm not I don't think the Dollhouse one is running anymore, but Angel and Buffy and Firefly I believe still do have comic runs or if if they don't still have them anymore, then they had a very lengthy run to to tie off the series. Very much. Um and that kind of brings I guess that brings us into another area of geek culture, uh comic books. Yes. I'm more of a comic person than Rory is, so I'll let him Absolutely. talk about comics first before I get into what, what comics I like, why I like comics. But uh, the only comics yeah. I've ever seen are Batman comics. Yeah. So yeah, Batman's cool. Oh, well, Batman is cool. Uh, I think and we're gonna have a Batman show later on in the in our uh, br- um, in the year, and we're gonna talk about yeah. his influence with. But uh, that's a that's a topic. Because for uh, yeah, day. well yeah, because unfortunately most people, the only Batman they know uh, oftentimes is Christian Bale. They, yeah. they don't know. Uh, Kevin Conroy, or, or uh, if not, then they know the na 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 na. You know the Adam West yeah, Batman yeah, from the sort of shame because <laughs> that's not. It's not Batman. Sort of, he is Batman. Yeah. It's an aspect of Batman, but it's not the modern Batman. No, it's it's not the modern Batman. It's it's the Batman that I remember being referenced in Thirty Rock. Yeah, that's uh, and uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, I mean, if you remember, if anybody watched SpongeBob, uh, then the characters of Mermaid Man and Particle Boy. That was a uh, a tribute to the Adam West Batman series. They are basically a like they're that's the exact replica except they're using uh, Aqu- Aquaman esque characters. Yeah, yeah, precisely. The um, which is a great show. Yeah, everybody should also watch SpongeBob. Yeah, uh, but I, I no, I think I think comic books is is really your area. So I was wondering if you could you could talk about how comic books, uh, sort of relate to geek culture, their crossovers, and also one thing I I want you to talk about is as a, as a comic book guy when you see things. Based off comic books, like the Iron Man movies and the Batman movies. Okay. How do you feel about the way they treat them? Okay, well, comic books have, longer than TV shows, have been a part of geek culture. And by that I mean, they comic books, especially superhero-based comic book shows like, uh, or comic book series, sorry, like Superman, Batman, um, and some of the more obscure ones like Captain America and Green Lantern, you know. But the, the, the big name ones, 
they started out in the 30s in what is called now the golden age of comic books. And that was when radio was still very popular, but TV wasn't it, – it hadn't kind of gone the way of radio yet. There wasn't a TV in every home yet, so there really wasn't very much in the way of television broadcasting and certainly not – any kind of focus on you know nerd or geek culture. So comic mm-hmm. books were really a, a uh, and they were much more popular back then, and they were uh, a, a very much a part of geek culture because it was the only place where you could get stories about superheroes, fantasy stories, um, you know, different kinds of pulp fiction. You know, this is where you get like Captain Tomorrow and the alien insects from Planet X, and you'd be really cheesy, but it was fine because it was the 30s. Um, so really, to me, there are they are a long stay in, of geek culture, and it's a shame that they're kind of I don't want to say dying out, but they're not nearly as popular as they once were. And I, I think the '90s are a big blame for that. We're going to talk about yeah. more about comic books, and again in a later show. But uh, there was a big thing called the speculator boom in the in the '90s that almost destroyed the comic book industry, and they haven't really recovered. Although we we now have movies based off comics. Um, so is that is that is the movies based off comics? Is that a have they historically been a good thing for you personally? Like, I have usually enjoyed m- most of the big name comic book adaptations for f- the you know the like in in film form. For example, the original Superman movies that you know with um, Christopher um, Reeves. Uh, Christopher Reeves, thank you. Um, they were quite good. Uh, I liked the Sam Raimi Spider Man, which was the one starring Tobey Maguire Spider Man, which came out in the early two thousands. Can we can we say we like? The Sam Raimi Spider Man's one and two. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, yes. Uh, I like the first two X Men movies, kind of, because they were they were all right. Um, and then, uh, but they uh, comic book movies seem to be getting better. America, because we had a very low period where we had movies such as Daredevil and Catwoman and yeah. uh, Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer and. That was really the low point. Who's responsible for the totally absurd quote that there's never been a bad Catwoman? Uh, oh, that was the woman who played the first Catwoman in the um, um, uh, Tim Burton uh, Batman, uh, Batman Returns, and I will find out. Uh, I will find that out right now. Oh, Batman Returns. That was was that Michelle Pfeiffer? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, so Michelle Pfeiffer said there has never been a bad Catwoman, and apparently she did not see Halle Berry's 2005 uh, Catwoman movie, which was uh, it's by far considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah, so, it, oh, it's terrible. And uh, yeah. for the record, I didn't really like Batman Returns. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't, um, she was fine in it. Uh, it was yeah. it was really Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> now he, but here's the thing. In 2005, we got a terrible Catman movie, but we got probably the beginning of the return to the glo- uh, uh We probably got the uh, apex, like the beginning of the apex and the rise of comic book movies, and that is Batman Begins. It's funny yeah. how Batman always seems to pioneer the different medias he's in. Uh, the first Batman movie, and by that I mean the uh, Michael Keaton Batman, Batman, just uh, 1989 right. Batman, yeah. uh, with, directed by Tim Burton, that was considered a landmark film because it brought Batman back to back. Uh, popular culture that I thought it was had, pretty cool as well yeah it had, and that hadn't been seen since um, Adam West's uh, live action Batman series in the 60s um then you have uh, the same. You have Batman Return to Prominence in TV with the Batman the Animated Series, which came out in the uh, early '90s. That was uh, which is a, a, an award-winning show, fantastic show. Uh, and then you have Batman Begins, which showed not only the return of Batman to the big screen after several v- abysmal films, uh, and worth and those are Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but it all. Uh, but it also shows the the, uh, the rise in superhero movies um, because now after Batman Begins. You You've got movies like Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and I know you didn't personally like Thor, but I, a lot of people enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed it quite well, and it's better than Catwoman yeah. or Daredevil or Elektra. Um, yeah, oh, y- yes. And then you <laughs> got – No disagreement from me there. And then you get really excellent movies, and by and I do mean really excellent. They're some of my favorite films ever in The Dark Knight, which is – Probably in my top twenty list, like favorite films ever, and right, the yeah. Avengers, which is also in my top twenty. Batman, Batman Begins is is my is yeah my home in the in that in that particular Batman franchise. But what I'm saying is, you get these really really popular. You're right. Movie, no no question about it. And that. I th- this is doing good because it. I think these movies and shows like Doctor Who 
which are very, very pop and Harry Potter, which are very, very popular with people in general, but specifically with females.